Happy Thursday, boys and girls. My name is Jeffrey Sky Metro. Coming to you live from the default location. Thursday walk. You know, years ago. <clears throat> and more than likely when I was smoking weed, I was really into the new age process. I was really into the non-traditional new age kind of <clears throat> meditation, yoga, you know, blissfulness, that whole rainbows and bunnies kind of thing that I may or may not tease about now. I mean, I really was into it. Buddhism, you know, alternative, alternative non-traditional religions, different thinking, mindfulness, not so much meditation, but the idea was there. I didn't chant or anything, but there was something like that. And I wouldn't have mantras or, you know, things I repeated, but I was in that kind of realm. You know, I was, you know, I, I, I got into it. I, I, I was feeling it and I accepted it. You know, I didn't go as far as crystals and stuff, but I would do candles and I tried to burn sage and incense and use, you know, like aromas and lights and settings to set moods with music and just kind of, you know, vibe in the moment, either vibe mindfully being awake of the present or just letting my mind drift, my mind and body drift in like some ethereal ocean of nothingness and all that. I was into it. And I'm not saying that I'm not now. I was really, really into it. And I'm not saying I'm not now. I, I will have to say I don't, this is probably the wrong way to put it, but I don't believe in it like I did then. No, that's definitely where I don't believe in it the same way I do now. That, that I can say. Because um, I found, it seems I found that a lot of that can be achieved through what I believe are quote unquote traditional practices. You know, I, I, and uh, like I'm thinking the Western philosophy is you know, I'm a disciplined stranger at work, you know, more because I, I grew up in Ohio, industrial town, work, play hard, you know, work hard, religion, alcohol, prayer, you know, football, sport, you know, just the hard stuff that I saw as being more industrial or tough or things that people who have to endure winter every year go through as opposed to having a, maybe an easier existence where you don't have to endure winter out here and it's sunny and bright all the time and one thing about the no winter in California of course it doesn't get cold it doesn't get freezing it doesn't snow but the sun doesn't go away for months. It's always sunny. Pretty much. You wake up, it's always going to be sunny. You go back east. And when I go back to Ohio. This weekend or whenever I go. <laughs> you know, it, I, I'll, I'll be up in the air. We'll be above the clouds. It'll be really bright. And then as I make our descent. It started to get darker and a little bit more gray. And it'll be that gray. It it's possibly could be that gray until I leave a couple weeks later. And I'm, I'll just get used to it. I'll adapt. And then when I get on the airplane and come back and we fire above those clouds and that sun hits me like it is now, I go, oh my God. I go, oh my, my, and I get happy and I get excited to get back to 
California in a place I've been for 40 years now. And it was also a time when I was going back right at the, like right when the season was changed or a couple of times I went back to Ohio, right when it was beautiful and the weather wasn't, you know, it wasn't hot and sunny all the time. You know, there was a little bit of weather. The weather was interesting and comfortable. And it just wasn't blatantly sunny all the time. And I got back here. He stepped out of the plane when I died. And went back into that sunny. And it irritated me. <laughs> I was like, oh God, here we go. With all this damn sun again. And I knew I kind of didn't mean it, but I kind of did. I mean, there was a point to be made. You know, how how much I'm going to let that point affect me or how, how bad or whatever. You know, how real it was. I don't know, but it, 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 it was a point. I'm like, oh, here we go. Back to the same old sunny blah, blah, blah weather. And I, I felt that for probably a few seconds or maybe a day or so. And then, you know, we get all a little bit of weather out here. There's no like winter. It's not a winter winter, but we get a little change. Every now and then, in January, February, it'll rain for a couple of weeks. You know, we, we this weather change, it gets a little, it gets a little cold. Air quotes. I can't do both figures because I'm holding the thing. It gets a little, you know, chilly out here. There's no doubt about that. So, you definitely can sense a change. But not like back there, you know, where things just die. I'm, you know, the trees, I don't know if I go back this time, you know, I could probably look at my pictures. The trees may be just turning or, or when I go back, whenever I go back, I think in January or wherever, you know, everything's gone. All the leaves are gone. All the leaves are gone, you know, and the sky is gray. California dreaming, it's no joke. But I say all that to say this, kind of. Doing that mindfulness stuff and that, you know, hippy dippy, I probably could have left that out, but I had to throw it in there. You know, the hippy dippy kind of new age thinking, oh, you know, all that, you know, that I like to stereotype and typecast and make fun of. During that, there was a you know, talk about relaxation. And even today at my job, which is extremely liberal, even today at my job, you know, there's talk about, you know, meditation and things you can do to calm yourself and, you know, be relaxed. And I'm not, you know, my life is, come on, what do I got to relax for? But I was thinking too, I don't get too far side off track, but I went into work yesterday. We had a fire drill. Seeing people, just I just have, I just enjoy my life so much. I'm not even gonna say that I have a good life. I'm, I'm not gonna say that. What I'm gonna say is I just enjoy my life and being Jeffrey so much, just so much. I'm at a point where I just do. I don't want to say I do whatever I want, but I kind of do. I make this. I. I I make this any situation I'm in what I want it to be. I do the best I can to make the situation I'm in be what I want to be. And this includes what I believe the people around me, you know, would not want, but would tolerate or expect and all that. You know, it's not without regard to the people around me. I don't, you know, I'm going to be Jeffrey. And to a degree, I do take under consideration the people around me. I was thinking about when I go to the game. You know, I'm sitting there in my seat, you know, row two, <laughs> 50 yard line on the aisle. <laughs> and I'm just, ah, ah, ah. You know, talking to the game, talking to myself, talking to the food, talking to Tomlin, hollering at Tomlin, hollering at Pickett, 
and then just basically making out general statements out loud. Everybody around me can hear. You know, and then I did the other other guy. Guy next to me start, you know, we start going back and forth. He got it. You know, I say, he say, look, and, you know, he'll say, so and so in coverage. You know, and I look and we see, yep, and you know, we watch that. You know, he's like, uh oh, third and ten. You know, like that. Where we talking, you know, <clears throat> not to each other, <clears throat> but just put it out there anyhow. You know, that's that's gonna happen. Um, I'm thinking about going to the game Sunday too. I might. But usually when I fly in, I'm tired. I gotta figure out how I gotta see how that's gonna be. The game isn't until one. I'll have a car. I land, I get there, I land at six, so I could be with daughter and granddaughter by eight. We have the whole evening. The granddaughter leaves anyway. And not that I don't want to hang with my daughter, but we have solo agendas. <laughs> we have solo agendas that we prize. So I might as well go to the game. Or lay in the bed all day. See? But I want to go. But see, the thing is, this game is in Pittsburgh. It's been a while since I've went to a game at Heinz Field. And seeing the number of Steeler fans in, in Vegas and LA is nice and I wouldn't si quite say overwhelming but whelming if that's a word if I can say whelming instead of overwhelming not quite overwhelming but it, you know you do get emotionally charged by it when you go to Pittsburgh and it's everybody black you know, it's, it's charging and people just spirited and yeah something something to behold if you're a lifelong Steeler fan as I am oh the reason okay what I was saying was you know there was talk you know meditation and mindfulness and remain calm and like relax your shoulders you know, close your eyes, you know, rub your temples, think of pleasant thoughts, all that kind of stuff. And I'm overdoing it just to give you an idea, you know, what I mean. But I'm finding more and more that I have to notice and acknowledge that I have to let myself relax and not tense up. I have to let myself relax, let things flow, and not tense up at certain reactions or feelings from my body, if I can put it that way. I'm not sure how to exactly put it. but. And I was saying before, you know how you get that sleepy feeling and you're feeling drowsy. I would tense up and try to force against it. You know, try to like hold it down in my head. That may or may not have been giving me headaches. Tense up in my shoulders and my chest. Instead of just relaxing and breathing. Sometimes when I'm walking, I tense up or like try to stand more erect, more authoritative or not authoritative, but you know, more like on guard where I'm learning or I'm practicing just relax. See, just like right now, I just relax my shoulders, you know, because they were just not, I mean, without even thinking, they tensed up. That is what I, I can't start walking all like this now. There's no doubt about that. 
you know I'm over I'm exaggerating it but you see I put a little bit on there you see how it turns my midsection up turns my torso up a little you know I'm trying to find a balance especially in my head when I wake up in the morning it could be my pillows it could be my neck it could be from stretching trying to stretch my neck out but I, 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 I know in the past for sure that I way overdid it and I've gotten better in the last month month and a half two three months I'm about to relax because I can I notice it right away and I can stop myself I notice it right away and I don't do that anymore. You know, I'm able to say, okay, okay. You know, don't do that no more. I'm able to, you know, just recognize it much more quicker. Sooner, quicker, whatever. And that's what I was. And then I have sinus irritation up in here. You know, when I wake up my neck, sometimes I can feel like a little headache starting to come on or tension, just probably just tension. And I just, today I woke up a little earlier and I kind of laid in bed and deliberately relaxed, you know. Not so much that I have my eyes closed and was humming or, or anything like that. Just kind of, you know, breathe. So my shoulders relax, let my neck relax, you know, like that. And just kind of, and just kind of, you know. Let things flow. I started. I realized that tensing up against it, or however you want to call it, doesn't make it work. Doesn't make it better. And it's, you know, it's almost like that industrious, you know, Ohio type mentality where you struggle against it, you fight against it, you hold it down, you beat it down, you don't let it win, you overcome it. Versus what I see as a California style, we just let it flow. You know, it's okay. You know, it's all right. You needed it. You know. As I got older, I found it somewhere in the middle that where I can embrace yes and no. I can embrace that bad things happen and will happen. I can embrace that sometimes violence is needed or violence is appropriate or how appropriate violence is is subjective up to the individual. It's really not up to me to say. I can have my opinion and the way I handle things, but as with anything, you can't say what's right for somebody else. Just little things, you know, where I see the new AG California lifestyle is, you know, having no edges. Don't even say no. You ask them a question. You give them a whole par They give you a whole paragraph when all they could have just said was no. You know, that, you know self-sacrifice. Or just sacrifice for others, keeping others primary in your thoughts. And there's a balance. There's a healthy balance. And I like to stereotypically put California in the far new agey left. Super far hippy dippy bunnies and ray dose category just to, to generalize I like to generalize that just to make the argument easier 
even though I know it's not completely accurate. But it makes it a lot easier to, you know, to compare the two and make the argument, makes the point stand out a little stronger. But anyway, I just wanted to get on that. Just in case somebody needs to hear that, as they say. Just to relax, you know, don't tense up. You know, hold your stomach muscles in, torso, my abdomen, you know. Just let it relax. Just let your shoulders drop. And the face, facial features, instead of, I could actually stop frowning. Not a frown, I don't know what to call it. Tense up my face. Tense up this area of my face. I can just have that, just relax and just let it, you know, just let it flow out. And just do it that way. They're building this house. They've been building this house down here for about a year and I've been getting pictures of it. And I need to get pictures of it today. So I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. Cause I need to get these pictures. I guess I should, <laughs> could shoot video, huh? I think I might do that. I guess I just cut this on, cut back on it, do the outro. I try, try to shoot some video of the house being built. So there's people out there working. And they stare at you and I wouldn't say it makes you feel uncomfortable but I am human and I do have a reaction to it even if I am you can kiss my ass Jeffrey and I know I'm not doing any harm and I know it's legal but blah, 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 blah. you just don't want it that's what they you know even though I do have Jeffrey it's all about Jeffrey I'm gonna do what I want I, don't, I try not to do it at the expense of other people. Even if I know I'm right, 100% right, if I know it's gonna make them uncomfortable, I will take that in consideration. <laughs> I don't wanna say that I won't do it. I don't wanna say that I won't do it because a lot of times, if something is to make them uncomfortable, is the reason I would do it, just to make them uncomfortable. A lot of times, a lot of times, where I feel them being uncomfortable benefits them and me purely subjective who am i to say what benefits somebody me and on and only me to me not for them just my opinion my idea and this is the way i can act and react because i'm in control of what i do even if it's in relation to you on behalf of you quote unquote for you because of you to you i'm still in control of that action and what I think, feel about how good, bad, right, or wrong it is, is up to me. And the reason I can use good, bad, right, or wrong is because I'm talking about 100% from my perspective. Good, bad, right, or wrong goes no farther than the tip of my nose. It's all it is, is in my head and what I think and what applies to me. I don't think there's any universal good bad right or wrong i was even thinking you could be watching a football game we can get pittsburgh can get interception all the steelers fans may think that's good there'll be somebody out there steeler fan who may or may not think that's good or come up with a point to where no that was bad you know something really good i mean everybody cheering for the same team we're on the same page we're on the same team Something, okay, now, if we win the Super Bowl, <laughs> if you're a Steeler fan and we win the Super Bowl, you know, the probability is 99.9% .9 of the people are going to think that's good. But you still can't say it's universal, I don't think. I, can't, I don't think there's, you know, universal, universal agreement. I think that's what I'm looking at. I don't think, I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's possible. I hope that it's not. 100% universal agreement on anything. You know, I always want that 
descending. I always want that descending response or argument or counter argument. You know, I always want that. So that's why I say I don't really use good, bad, right or wrong. And if I do, I premise it or acknowledge or bullet point or stepify, simplify, step, uh, stup, stup, make it aware, apparent, uh, not declare, uh, specify, I can't think of the word, specify, I guess, that it's only what I think or what I feel. And it's, it only applies to me. Purely subjective. It only applies to me. My good, my bad, my right, wrong does not apply to you. You got to have your own. And maybe that's where religion comes in, where they try to give you some. Where you can buy a philosophical book or a, a tenant or a belief system that helps you decide what you think is good or bad. Not the way I operate. Never was. Even little. The story I'm going to tell is even little. Even with my father, who was my God. And I don't mean who was my God. I mean who was my God. <laughs> Every time he came home from work and we sat there at that table and had dinner. And I sat right across from him. That, that put something in you. The way he carried himself, his integrity, no nonsense. But, you know, he's able to have fun and joke and, you know, do all that stuff. But there was a level of integrity and the way you carry yourself. You help handle your business. You know, you go on like that. But anyway. I forgot why I went down that road. But, oh yeah, even with him telling me stuff, you know, stuff that I, that the man was never wrong in my eyes. Everything he said eventually came true. And even, I would even test him. I would even be on the lookout or looking around, checking what he tells me. Everybody gets checked. I can, that's the story I'm telling. Ever since I was little, I checked everybody. I tried to fact check and see if that matched my experience. At least, at the least, I check if it matched my experience. If what you're telling me matches my experience. If what you're telling me is, matches my experience. And the big, big, big one is this whole racism thing. Black people talking about racism keeping me down. I don't know if it's... Okay, racism exists. Racism definitely exists. But as my buddies Glenn Lowry and John McCorder say on their podcast, The Glenn Show... It's not a primary determinant in your future. It's not the biggest thing you need to worry about if you're a black person. You're trying to get a job and be successful. Racism is nowhere near the top of the list, top of the list as far as obstacles go for you. Sure, I'm not saying it doesn't exist now. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm saying it should not be a priority. No. It's not a priority in my life when it comes to the things I want to accomplish, get done, or attain, or be a part with or align with. It's out there, I understand, but it's nothing that's going to keep me up at night or not make me want to get up out of bed and go do what I need to do. So, no matter what anybody tells me, like I said, even my father, who was godlike to me, you know, who actually was God there for a while. <clears throat> because whatever he said or did was right, no matter what. You know, when I'm younger, can't say that much for my mother, because mothers get it hard. Mothers, you're too close to your mother. Mothers are sympathetic. Mothers are so much of a part of you that. It's easy to question them and challenge them. You know, even it starts when you're young with the crying 
and the fussing. I see granddaughter just do stuff to my daughter, her mother, that she won't do to anybody else. You know, she just won't do to anybody else. And it, part of it's familiarity, you know, part of it's nurturing, the maternal nurturing mechanism that allows them to do that. <laughs> uh, and our mother's got a tough road, but you better, you gotta better lay it down now. You better lay it, lay it down now before it gets too late. You better lay it down now. But even with that, I think it comes down to I question everything and if it matches my experience. You know, I'll listen to your story. I'll listen to your claim. I'll challenge it. Or I'll agree with it depending on if it matches my experience. I don't care if you're an expert. You could be an expert in anything. You could be the expert. I don't care. You can tell me A plus A equals B. And I get it. But I still want you to show me why and how you came to that conclusion. I don't care who you are. You still got to show me the mechanics of how it worked. I just don't want to somebody give me a it's like somebody give you a statement give you a black box and say this box does this I want to know how that box works that's just me and until I do I'm still going to have my opinion about it or you know the validity of said statements or whatever like that you know I'll still, I'll still question it to a degree until I actually can understand and align with, you know, the principles of it, the way I've seen the principles demonstrated in my own life, or I can actually align with the principles because I've seen it. Oh, yeah. You know, when so and so does that, this usually happens. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that in my life. It aligns with my life. And even then, I still ain't going to totally believe it because science is about proving things wrong. The whole idea behind the scientific method, see, I'm stretching now, see? I like to turn my body that way and stretch because I feel like a little creak in my neck. But even still, I'm, keeping, I'm trying to keep my body relaxed and not tense up and keep my breath, you know, at a certain thing. So, you just want to tense up, hear me? I'm breathing, so I guess I'm, my pace must be going faster or better while I'm talking and I'm trying to maintain the pace of my walking and talk and stay relaxed at the same time <laughs> so yeah and people walk by and you can tell they stop talking and want to see what you're doing you know you get used to it maybe not so much in Ohio yet <laughs> Next time, people will be like blowing their horns and, you know, out here, you know, it's a, it, every, a lot of people, you know, it's just kind of normal. Like I said, I was in Vegas that one time, walking from the airport, shooting mine. No, it was a guy shooting his. And I heard him talking about drink prices and how you get this drink in this hotel or something. He was just walking along. Talking to a camera, explaining, I guess, the drinks, you know, how to get drinks or whatever in Vegas. I was like, yeah. That's when I got mine out. But anyway, just stay relaxed, you know. Let that sinus pressure die down by itself, you know. Relax with the facial muscles, relax. You know, not to the point to where you get drowsy and sluggish, but just enough. In no sense to be intense. You know, you don't have to talk all soft like I'm doing now, like a California New Agey person, but it helps. You know, just for a second or two. And when you get home, you'll take a shower. 
get dressed, eat, to get ready to ramp it back up. Start taking them calls. Start dealing with customers. Start handling issues. But today's lesson, or today's message was is relax. And I get the California New Agey thingy. I mean, you know, you take you take parts of philosophies, you know, where you find them. And you put them together. Oh, no one philosophy is completely correct. Except objectivism. I think I'm joking. But so far. So far. When I look into objectivism. Seems to be pretty well written. I don't think I find it. I definitely haven't found anything that I egregiously disagree with. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I think I was thinking about my George Clinton tickets. I bought four tickets to go to this show months ago. Paid way too much for them. Pay more than what they're going for now. About four of them thinking, you know, I get to get deal, I can resell them, blah, 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 blah. Now I feel like I stuck with them. And I swear I'll never, I, every time I do this, I say I ain't gonna never do it again. Every time. I mean it this time, I'm done. You know, buying tickets. It's even hard to give them away. You just don't want to eat them. And you just get to the point. It becomes such a strain thinking about the tickets. You'd be like, forget it, I don't care. You know? But there's somebody who's always need them and want them. And I probably, probably don't want to deal with that. How many of my tickets? I'm emailing to you. I don't have email. You know, how's it work? How's it work? Can I come with you? No. You can't come with me. No. You want the ticket or not? I ain't gonna hold your hand and get a ticket, but I ain't gonna hold your damn hand and walk you through it. You ain't got no ride, that ain't my problem. I'm giving you a goddamn ticket. What you want me to do, get you a babysitter too? That's how I feel about it. Anyhow, swing on y'all two times. For me, for the phone. I can't even see myself. I'm gonna see myself. Anyhow, swing on y'all two times. For me, for the bomb. And for every elementary particle that's ever existed in this universe or any universe that ever was, is, or will be. We're talking about the totality of it all. The theory of universe. An hypothesis of all as one. Yeah. My name is Jeffrey.